بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وطبيب نفوسنا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا سيما بقية الله روحي وأرواح العالمين لتراب مردمه الفداء Dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم جميعا و رحمت الله و برکاته May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his bounty accept our fasting, our worshipping and inshallah preserve it for us for a day that all of us we are going to face young and old, sheikh or chef as I usually say no matter who we are that nothing will avail us, nothing will benefit us other than these moments that inshallah we have sent for the sake of God to increase our saving account in the hereafter. Tonight and tomorrow night are the last nights of the life of Amirul Mu'mineen, Ya Asubuddin. See how comfortably you sat all of us tonight. We had our dinner, we are now having our amal, tomorrow we are fasting. If you can imagine, send your souls, inshallah, to Kufa on the day like today, the 19th of, is it the 19th today? The 19th of the month of Ramadan. A day after Amirul Mumani alayhi alayhi salam has been struck. Physicians, doctors are coming, examining the wound. And as I will, inshallah, mention tomorrow night to no avail. We can imagine Imam Zaman Ajalallah Farajur Sharif, Fatima to Zahra, Ahlul Bayt, Alhamdulillah Salam. These days and nights are mourning and grieved because these occasions, these nights and days belong to Amirul Mu'minin Ali Alayhi Salam. You know how the difficulty that we have different people with, of course, good intention and concern that they have or issues that they are facing themselves. They come and give us feedback that, Sheikh, would be good to talk about this. Sometimes it makes it very difficult, especially if you get variety of suggestions. How to reconcile and how to please everybody. My humble suggestion is that it's impossible to please everybody. It's always ple better and more accurate to please one, and that is the Almighty God. But sometimes the pleasure of pe Allah's pleasure is with the pleasure of people. They are giving us good feedback. One of the uh, criteria that I have, and I share it with you, you tell me if this is the right way to go about it or not. Anytime that we come upon this uh, uh, holy member, this is the, uh, the platform of admonition. This is the platform for reminder, reminding all of us, including the speaker first and foremost. Alhamdulillah, we are blessed that we have role models to look up to them. You know, usually junior speakers, they look at the senior speakers. The best role models, infallible role models, are Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. I always get inspiration from the sermons of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Especially, alhamdulillah, the treasury of Nahjul Balaghi that we have. What kind of topics usually Imam Ali alayhi salam, some of the topics were li limited to the audience and to that er uh, time, fair enough. But there are some general topics you see that Imam Ali alayhi salam repeatedly bring them up anytime he goes up on a stage to address the community. 
What kind of impression do you get? Imagine that you are attending the sermons of Imam Ali and you see that among different topics, there are some few, and I can tell you two, three maximum, that repeatedly are mentioned in Nahj Balaghi during the sermons of Imam Ali and Salam. Don't you get the impression that these few topics that repeatedly Imam brings up must have of certain significance? That's what I, I believe. I believe that those topics are very important that repeatedly Imam alayhi salam mentions. Does it say that last Friday I spoke about this? No need to repeat it again now. The reputation of it and in psychology of commercials, you know that it is the reputation. They put a, a billboard for months until it's registered completely in your, in, in your mind. Before Nahjo Balagh also, the role model that we have is the revelation, alhamdulillah, that we have available to us, the Holy Quran. Again, when you see that there are certain topics, limited topics, repeatedly mentioned in the Quran, that almost impossible to open, and I have done this with my students, randomly open the Quran and see if this topic that I mentioned to you is mentioned in this page or not mentioned in this page. What kind of impression do you get? That topic must be of certain significance that so repeatedly is mentioned in the Quran for mankind. Quran is for mankind. Now one of the topics, and especially because we are living uh, the day and the night of the martyrdom of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, I was thinking, contemplating that if we could possibly listen to Imam alayhi salam tonight, if Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Farajo Sharif, we would be blessed instead of Sheikh Mansur, Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Farajo Sharif would ascend this member and would talk. What would be the topic that they would choose for us? Now that this is not possible, humbly I would say, Ya Sahib al Zaman, what would be the topic that you like me to talk about? You would be pleased, you would recommend to me to talk about. Considering the fact that I mentioned about the Quran and about Nahj al it is a must that these two, three topics should be covered in every occasion that we have. One of them is the topic, inshallah, for tonight, and especially because this is Laylatul Jum'ah. And I believe some of you already have this afternoon visited the graveyard, the cemetery you are getting to where I'm heading. The topic of inevitable. A destination that Quran refers to as inevitable. In the West that people are very much used to paying tax, I tell them that there are two inevitables in the West. One is tax, the second is death. Even if you have the best accountant and auditor that you can get around the taxation system to avoid tax, there is no way you can avoid death. And that is why the Almighty God in the Quran, even with the disbelievers and kuffar, that they are rejecting arrogantly, knowingly, they are rejecting the truth, God says to understand me, to believe in me, prove one of the proofs for the existence of God is this. Ayah 28, Surah Baqarah, second chapter of the Quran. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Kayfa takfuruna billah? This kayfa takfuruna billah, how would you deny the existence of God? This is a rhetorical question. Rhetorical question means a question that you know the answer. You, you say that, is it, how can you deny the night? It's night time, how can you deny it? It's obvious as night. Or answers, kayfa takfuruna billah? How would you deny the existence of God? Once upon a time, you were non-existent. Brought you to life. Then he is going to again cause you to die. Undoubtedly, the most atheist person. I was talking to brothers last time. I told them that if you want to have a sound approach, Unless someone is extremely lost, it, well, there's nothing we can do about it. But if there is a platform of common sense, we call it common sense because it's a common platform, 
2 plus 2 equals 4, whether you are Muslim, non-Muslim, American, Asian, African, huh? this common sense. You tell him that if you want to have a common sense discussion, a sensible discussion, my friend, do you have any doubt that you are going to die one day? Or answers, Thumma yumi tukum, then he will cause you to die. Thumma yuhyikum, after that he says, I don't know about what is after that. We say, all right, to that far that you have no doubt, huh? That you are mortal being, you are going to die. Fair enough. Question is very simple. That since there is no doubt that you are going to die, and you cannot be certainly telling me that I know there is no life after death, because you have not been there to check it, to tell me I have been there, I checked it, there was nothing. Therefore, the, the best that you can claim is say, I don't know there is life after death. And I tell you that our religion tells us there is life after death. So we are between the two possibilities. No life after death, possibility of life after death. The situation is the following, because if this possibility is true and there is hellfire, there is eternity in hell and all the torment and punishment, you cannot afford it. Therefore, common sense that we had the argument about dictates that it's always better safe than sorry. Better to take the safe side. Fasting doesn't kill us. Praying doesn't kill us. But possibly it will save us. And common sense dictates to be better, be safe. This is to start, of course, the argument. So Quran, to prove his ex existence of God, starts from this. And mind you, this is one of the reasons. Very often I've been asked by some brothers and sisters who are interested in, in tabligh preaching, sharing Quran with non-Muslims. They say, Sheikh, do you have any recommendation where to start? I tell them my recommendation is to encourage non-Muslims to start reading the Quran from end to the beginning, not the other way around. The first chapters of the Quran, like Surah Al-Baqarah, Al Imran, Nisa, these are more of the jurisprudential issues. Whereas the short sower, the short chapters of the Quran, the main emphasis is about life after death. Subhanallah, you see that Quran refers to life after death as al-waqa'a. Al-waqa'a, it literally means the event. In other words, if there is one event in this world that there is no doubt about it, the event with capital E is the event of the Day of Judgment. You go through the, uh, the sower, the surah, in the last juz of the Quran, you see Surah Al-Qiyamah is there, Surah Al-Waqa'a is there. So many sower that the, the main theme is about either Tawheed or especially about life after this. Amma yatasa'aluna an al al azim To start with, huh? Why is it, and, and you know that these sunnah, the, the last chapters of the Quran are revealed to the Prophet first. Huh? Revealed to the Prophet first. Why? For the same notion that I told you that to deal with kuffar, it's easier to start with the end of the life than the beginning of the life. It's easier to start with them about this and then life after this. And this is what we want to, inshallah, talk about subhanAllah tonight. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. According to the teachings of the Quran, and being a Muslim, it is a must that we repeatedly remind ourselves about life after death. Those who are after self-building, one of the repeatedly mentioned recommendations in the words of Ma'asumin is dhikr. Quran is the book of dhikr. Remembering what? The first in the list is remember your death. Remember that one day you are going to die. And then what next? Then what next? It's so healthy, the Prophet says that every night that you go home, you want to sleep, you lie down in bed, remember, kama tanamuna tamutun wa kama tastayqaduna tub'athun as you, you fall asleep, you die. As you wake up, you will be resurrected. 
That's why the Prophet says, and no more akhul maut, the younger brother of death, is sleeping. And look at this divine mercy. Every night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting us through that experience. That once you fall asleep, you do no longer are conscious of anything. This is a death, a kind of death. Like God is putting you on hibernate, if you're familiar with, with the term. Your brain will be on hibernate. Who wakes you up? Subhanallah, how many people they go to bed, they never wake up. I know some of them is part of my, uh, my profession. They went to bed, they never woke up. Tonight you and I could be one of them. And you don't need to be in your 80s, 90s for this to happen. All right? One of the definite excursions I have been undertaking and I uh, respectfully urge the teachers, the educationists in the community to do it with your students and with family and yourselves, time to time take them to an excursion, not just museum, not to see the beach, not to do different scenes, take them to the graveyard. Boys, go around and find the youngest uh, buried, the youngest child. We call it the stillborn, because I've done this, I know. The stillborn and born dead. How old are you? Now you tell me a 10-year-old boy could have died 10 years ago, like those kids. Subhanallah. And then go and check the oldest one. Variety, it's a country of its own. Variety of profession, gender, huh? That means that death does not come to say, hey, are you ready or not? Death does not give us a response to, to tell Tan and say to the angel, don't touch me. There is no such thing, don't touch me. He will touch you. So close to us that when Imam Sadiq was asked, how come some people die and their eyes are open? The Imam says, because the angel of death did not give them a chance to even close it. Blink of an eye and you had to go, my friend. You had to go. Quran says that death is a universal law in the universe. In the world of the contingency and in the world of existence, I have the Almighty God says, I have one universal law that there is no exception in it. No one is exempt from it, no matter who you are, including my prophets, including my angels, including the angel of death, Israel even. And that is the universal law of death. Look at the ayat. We start. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Whoever is on this planet Earth, fan. Check the translators. One of the common mistakes in these translations is the following. They say, everyone on this planet Earth will perish. That's not the right translation. I'll come back to it in a minute. Let me put the two, three different ayat together to see that this is a unique style of the Quran everywhere you go. First Quran starts with everyone on earth and all the inhabitants of earth are perishable, are perishing. That's a better translation. Even Quran talks about the Holy Prophet of Islam. Another human says, إِنَّكَ مَيَّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيَّتُونَ Mayyat, everybody knows. What's the meaning of mayyat? A dead, huh? God is telling the Prophet, you are dead. When God was revealing this ayah to the Prophet, the Prophet was alive or dead? He was alive physically. How come that the, the Almighty God is telling the Prophet, you are dead? وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيَّتُونَ My friend, you assume you are alive, you are all dead. According to this ayah of the Quran, we are all dead. I'll come to, back to explanation. Just keep this ayah pending in your mind for the time being, two so far. Another ayah. Every living soul is tasting. Not that will taste. Again, translator is mistaken. He say will have a taste of death. Where does it say sayadug? Sayadug, yani will. Also, fayadug, yani will taste. No, Quran said the right now is tasting death. 
كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه everything you can imagine هالك again اسم الفاعل not say هالك not that he will perish هالك right now is perishing right now is perished now this pending ayat examples that I mentioned to you put them together a principle will be driven and that principle is that if all that is on earth is fun is already perished right now is perished if the prophet on all humans are dead although apparently we are living if every living soul is perished and, and like the ayah that I mentioned no need to repeat it means that first of all the law of death is universal no one is exempt from it the second is that we are already dead for two reasons one is that if something is definite to happen it's like already happened I give you an example from English conversation you say Sheikh can you please do this for me tomorrow I said done I haven't done it yet tomorrow hasn't come yet when I tell you done consider it done and it's so definitely will be done now you can consider it it's already done because it is so definite that you and I are going to die or answers you are already dead you are already dead rest assured that you are already dead and here that's why everywhere please go with this glasses that I provide inshallah read the last surah of the Quran especially that so much of the hereafter is mentioned everywhere every ayah speaks about life after death is apparently about future grammatically you are expecting to say when it will happen and the translators mistaken say it will when it will happen Quran says when it happened إِذَا وَقَعَتْ الْوَقَعَتُ وَقَعَتْ فِي الْمَاضِي past tense when the event took place has not taken place yet why Quran is using past tense because it is so definite to tell you and I refer to myself for the dummies like me to have no doubt that it is so different like you say done consider it done and also what kind how can I say I'm alive considering with myself uh, comparing with myself with ever living the Almighty God so I'm, I'm really dead I'm like a dead person the, uh, the second that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I'm disconnected from the ever living, I'm dead. Therefore, I am dead. Another law Quran is so clear about when it comes to the issue of death is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that anything you doubt, you doubt, even if you doubt about my existence, the Almighty God says, you cannot possibly, unless you are not enjoying a sound mind, you cannot doubt life after death because you cannot doubt death therefore if there is death there must be life after death as well this and therefore quran refers often to death as al yaqeen yaqeen means certainty how quran says that some disbelievers say kunna nukadhibu bi yawm al-din hatta atana al yaqeen we used to deny the religion or the hereafter until certainty came to us here certainty came to us and death came to us now that death came to us Quran says that فَبَصَرُكَ لِيَوْمَ حَدِيدٍ because I'm testing you human society who believes in me who does not believe upon the, your death the test is over the curtain is removed now look at hell do you still have doubt? if you still you have doubt they said خُذُوهُ فَغُلُّوهُ ثُمَّ الْجَحِيمَ صَلُّوهُ Grab him, throw him to hellfire. Let him have a taste of the heat of the hellfire. Let me see still he believes or still he has doubt. Before reaches there, he says, wow, the moment of death and looking at life after this is, رَبْ يَرْجِهُونَ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَى God, please return. Please return me. You are, you, you are right. I now believe. Fir'aun Quran says in that very moment of this, Al-An, 
آمن تو به ما آمنه به موسا نه no, I believe نه no, تو قرآن است too late نه no. too late نه no. so this is again a well established fact in the Quran that there is no doubt about certainty of this the third issue established well in the Quran that should make us really to ponder about the issue of this and be prepared for that every day and night is that according to the teachings of the Quran nobody knows when, where and how he or she is going to die you don't believe me? cost you only a trip to the graveyard check the date of birth, the date of death the biggest mistake is to think that I have to get to my 80s to die. That's the biggest. I'm fooling myself if I believe like that. Quran says that Are they secure? Anybody has given them, them the guarantee that they while they are asleep they die how many people they went as I said went to bed and they died who has the guarantee while they are playing a game or in the amusement of dunya Rewayat says that the one who is selling fabric is cutting the fabric with the scissors before finishing the cutting of the fabric had gone I told you maybe, you could, where was it, I think for the youth I was talking about just the day that I was leaving Isfahan, Iran last week that uh, one of our relatives, only 37 years of old with no heart disease history at all no apparent disease at all in the morning he had his sahari, morning prayer and then he is getting ready, the rest of to go uh, to work goes to the kitchen for whatever the reason and his wife assumed that he's gone she said that I finished my morning prayer and I came and, and I noticed that his car is there he hasn't left the house yet I went to the kitchen just and I saw he's dropped on the floor called the ambulance they came and said oh finished so in instantly finished this is the story of life Quran says that's how easy it is to, to die okay and nobody knows where on earth you are going to die Rumi make, make, mentions a very nice story he says at the time of Prophet Solomon you know one of the miracles of Prophet Solomon was wind were, uh, was at his uh, capture one day a man comes to Prophet Solomon in Babylonian in, in today's part of Iraq comes to him and says, Ya Rasulallah, talking to Prophet Sulaiman, at the time of Prophet Sulaiman, Ya Rasulallah, please say something to Israel. What happened? I was walking in the bazaar and I saw Israel, he was looking at me weird. I got scared. I think he's after me. Please tell him that I'm not ready now. He said, all right, go. Israel comes to visit Prophet Sulaiman and Prophet Sulaiman says, Ya Malakullah, Ya Israel, why are you scaring some of us humans? He said, what, what happened? He said, the brother came and he was complaining about you, that you looked at him weird. That guy at so-so place. He said, wow, interesting. He said, what? He said, you know, I had a command from the Almighty God to take his soul in India this afternoon. And when I saw him in the bazaar in Babol in Iraq, Babylonian, I said to myself that, wow, how is he going to make it uh, from, uh, from here to India? I forgot to mention that part, that the guy is telling Prophet Suleiman, please send me somewhere far away from this city, because Israel is around here. Suleiman is telling the wind to take him to India, far away in those days. And he, feel, he, felt like he thought that he is now safe, secure in India. And Israel says later on to Prophet Suleiman that I have a command from the Almighty God this afternoon collect his soul in India. I was wondering.